Earth with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. E-Man Jimmy is eight years old. He is strong and he is bold. He can capture outlaws cause he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's stealing his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing old cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready-to-eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. That's right, each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say... He's stealing his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! red brick building faced the river near Hartford, Connecticut. A sign over the door read, Colt's Patent Firearms Manufacturing Company. Inside the building, Samuel Colt, seated at his desk, looked up when he heard the door of his office being opened. He smiled warmly and stood to welcome an attractive lady. Well, Nancy Payne, I'm delighted to see you. Good morning, Colonel Colt. The clerk told me to walk right in. Yes, yes, of course. Please sit down. I received your letter asking me to call. I'm very glad that you're here. I'll close the door. I heard only yesterday that you and your son are going west to join your husband. Yes. Gerald made all the arrangements. Sam and I are going to meet him in St. Joseph, Missouri. Good. I'm glad Gerald is at last able to send to you and the boy. How old is Sam? Sixteen, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> Seems only yesterday when he was born. And uh, named after me. <laughs> Gerald insisted on that. <laughs> well, Gerald's always been one of my best friends. I know that, Colonel Cole. Nancy, I have a gift for him. Oh, I'm sure he'll be pleased. And uh, I'd like you to take it to him. That's why I ask you to call. Oh, I'll be glad to. Here it is. A revolver, silver-plated, and with Gerald's name engraved on it, Oh, it's beautiful. There are just two others like it, and I'll never make another. Only three? Yes. The other two were especially made for a man who has many times proved my theory. A good gun like a man's mind, properly directed, may be a powerful force for law and peace. But improperly directed becomes an instrument of evil and destruction. The mates to this gun are worn and used by the Lone Ranger. On the day when Nancy Payne and her son left Hartford by train on the first leg of their trip to St. Joseph, Missouri, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, far away in northern Texas, stood beside their horses. As they finished tying the camp gear behind their saddles, Tonto said, That's a long way to Colorado. It's a long way, Tonto. But the trip will be worthwhile if we're able to help some of the pioneers make permanent homes 
The Colorado area is rich. The people are needed to develop the natural resources. Uh, Twenty men find gold, silver there. Yes. And since the start of mining operations, crooks of all kinds have gone to the settlements in the mountains. There are too few lawmen to protect the decent people. Well, you ready? Well, you ready. Easy, set the big boat. Mountain In due time, Nancy Payne and her son reached St. Joe. In the hotel lobby, when the woman inquired about her husband, a tall, raw-boned man said, I'm uh, sorry, ma'am, but I have bad news for you. What? I don't know how to break it to you, General. Bad news about General? Yes, ma'am. He, uh, he's dead. The stranger introduced himself as Brett Miller, a kind and understanding man he escorted Nancy and Sam to a quiet sitting room, then waited until the woman and boy had regained some of their composure. Tell me, how did Gerald die? And when? Well, it happened last week. He was in the cafe and had all his money in his pocket. Oh. A gunslinger held up the place, robbed Gerald and the two other men who were there. Your husband tried to stop the crook as he was leaving. The crook shot him. Do you know the name of the murderer? Yes, his name is Slater, Cal Slater. Was he caught? No, Sam, he got away. No one's seen him since the shooting. Cal Slater. I'll remember that name. What do you want to do, Mrs. Payne? Go back east? We can't, Mr. Miller. We have no money. Oh, I see. Gerald sent us barely enough to bring us here. We were going to buy a team and wagon and supplies and go to Colorado. Well, Mrs. Payne, I'm going to Colorado. I have a team, wagon, and supplies... My mother's going with me. Your mother? Yeah, she's quite old, and it'll be a hard trip for her. It'd help her a lot if you and Sam went with us. I don't know. Well, let's do it, Mom. Let me introduce you to my mother. The two of you talk it over. I know you'll like her, and she'll like you. That same day, after a two-hour visit with Brett Miller's mother, Nancy Payne made her decision. We'll go with you, Mr. Miller. Oh, good. But I insist on sharing the expense. Oh, that's all right. I want to pay at least part of our share. I have very little cash, but I, I... I know that, Mrs. Payne. And there's no use counting on recovering what Slater stole from your husband. That crook got clean away. I have something of value here in my bag. Just having you along to help take care of my mother will more than repay us. Why, a gun. Yes. This was to be a gift to my husband from Colonel Samuel Colt. Is it worth anything? Oh, I'd say it's worth a plenty. Then sell it. Yeah, what a shooting iron. Whatever you get for it will help pay for our food. If you say so, Mrs. Payne, the fact is you might need some extra cash before we reach the end of our trip. Do you know someone who'd buy the gun? Well, I reckon Pop Jenks would be glad to buy a gun like this. He owns a livery stable. I'll call on him right away. The following day found Brett Miller ready to leave for Colorado. With his mother, Nancy Payne, and Nancy's 16-year-old son aboard his covered wagon, Brett gripped the reins and whip and shouted, Get up there! Get up! That night, under cover of darkness, two men walked softly toward the livery stable. One was Cal Slater, the outlaw who had robbed and killed Gerald Payne. He was accompanied by Shorty Kent, a townsman who, for a share of the stolen cash, had become the killer's partner. Well, I, I don't like to rob Pop Jinx. We need horses and he's got them. But, but I used to work for Pop and he treated me first rate. You going soft. Well, no. You but... hadn't better. You can't be soft-hearted if you're going to travel with me. We're going to take care of ourselves, no matter who gets hurt. Now get your gun ready. Inside the stable, Pop Jenks had finished his chores and was about to put out the lights. But he paused to examine once again his newly acquired gun. He held it close to a lantern. Sure is a beauty. I wish my name was on it instead of Gerald Payne. You're covered. Huh? Drop the gun and hike your hand. Cal Slater. Drop the gun, Pop. And Shorty can't. What are you doing? I said with... Drop the gun. To do it before we plug it. That's more like it. Keep him covered, Shorty. I'll pick up the gun. Shorty, now listen to me. 
Slater's wanted for robbery and murder. Don't team up with him. Shorty's already teamed up with me. I gave him part of the loot for helping me hide out from the law. Shorty, the law will hang you for helping the killer. The law will never catch us, Pop. Hey, this is a mighty fancy gun. There's a name on it, Slater. The name of the man you robbed and killed. Huh? Well, okay. Sure enough. <laughs> Beans, I got his cash. It's fitting I should have his gun. <laughs> Why'd you two come here? Ah, we're going to travel a long way, Pop. And we need horses. So, now you're a horse thief. You just take it easy and you won't get hurt. We're going to tie and gag you. A short time later, Cal and Shorty blew out the lights, locked the livery stable door, mounted two stolen horses, and rode away. And Hal Slater took with him the silver coat that Pop Jenks had bought from Brett Miller. In the outlaw's possession, the special gun became an instrument of evil and destruction. It blazed a trail of robbery and murder from St. Joseph to the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. You bet we're eating our Wheaties out west, including the champs. Take Eddie Matthews, born in Texarkana, Texas, and a great slugger for the Milwaukee Braves. He got a Texas start and a Wheaties start. Been eating them for years. And there's Gene Littler from California, one of the best pro golfers in the game. Listen. How he socks them off the tee. You bet Gene's a Wheaties champ. Been eating them since he was seven. A He-Man breakfast for champs and gonna be champs. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Keep on eating your Wheaties. And you be do, 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 and I'll be okay. to continue. For weeks, Slater and Shorty rode through the gold-bearing mountains. Avoiding towns and settlements, they preyed on men who worked alone and stole small hordes of gold that had been painstakingly dug from the ground or panned from the streams. And then one night, while riding through a wooded valley, they saw a campfire. Rain in. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we'll leave the horses here. Right. As the gunmen approached the campfire, they saw an Indian seated on the ground and a fine paint horse tethered nearby. They didn't suspect that the Indian was Tonto, the friend of the Lone Ranger. Shorty, even if the Indian doesn't have cash or gold, that horse is worth taking. Yeah, it's better than mine. Your gun ready? <laughs> yeah, ready. Freeze, Indian, you're covered. On your feet, nice your hands. Uh-huh. What you want? We're going to borrow your horse. Keep your hands high. Take his gun, Shorty. Right. Hold it. Hey, what? Drop your gun. Not a chance. Oh. Two shots fired by the Lone Ranger from among the trees brought howls of pain from the startled outlaw. One bullet struck Shorty's gun and sent it flying from his hand. Another bullet grazed Cal's knuckles, and he dropped the silver coat. If you want more action, pick up your guns and we'll repeat the action. Hey, he's mad. Uh, now, Hoot. You're wrong. I'm not a crook. Pick up the gun, Toto. Uh, where'd you come from? It was right here in camp when my horse let us know that someone was coming. Of all that dog I gone. led my horse away from the clearing and waited in the darkness to see who you were and what you wanted. Well, listen, mister, we didn't mean no harm. My my horse went lame. We just wanted to borrow and... Tommy. Yes, Toto? Better you look at this gun. Me wants these two. What about the gun? You look. You see. The masked man could hardly believe his eyes when he saw a duplicate of his own revolvers. Holding the coat closer to the firelight, he read the inscription. To my good friend, Gerald Payne, from Colonel Samuel Colt. Are you Gerald Payne? Well, yeah, yeah, that's right. 
Is this man your partner? Oh, sure, he's my partner. Then you're Brett Miller. But Brett Miller? But why do you say How do you know? I saw your mine tunnel on the south side of Mount Misty. Ah. Oh, you did? Yes. Uh, you two, plenty lucky. Lucky, huh? Ah. We hear talk how Payne Miller find gold in old tunnel. With a rich vein like that, uh, why did you try to steal a horse? Ah, we didn't mean to steal it. We just wanted to borrow it. Like I said, my, my horse went lame. So we wanted to make a deal with the engine. At gunpoint? Ah, oh, we weren't going to shoot. We drew guns so he wouldn't shoot us before we could talk. Yeah, yeah that's right. We, we didn't know, but with the engine was an outlaw, we'd have been glad to pay for the horse. All right. I'll take your word for it. Where are your horses? Over that way. You going to let us go? Yes. The inscription on your gun is the finest recommendation a man can have. Uh-huh. Well, what about my gun? Here it is, Payne. We'll be watching you, so don't try any tricks with us. And here your gun. Oh, that bullet smashed it. You're lucky it's the gun that's broken. I could as easily have broken your arm. You may leave now. Come on, Sergeant. The Lone Ranger and Tonto followed on foot for a short distance. Then waited in the dark woods until they heard the two men ride away. <laughs> Neither of those horses found Lane Tonto. That's right. You think them men tell lies? Yes. And I think they intended to steal scouts. And me think same. I don't understand it. Colonel Cole wouldn't present a gun like that to a man who's capable of telling lies and stealing horses. Ah. And what we do? Let's go to the Payne Miller mine. I want to learn more about those men. Ah. We break camp? We might as well. There's no reason for us to return here. Now, let me start packing here. Good. Cal Slater and Shorty held their horses to a steady pace for about half an hour. When they were some distance from the woods, Cal signaled a halt. Ho, 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 ho. Shorty, did you hear what that masked man said? Uh, how could I miss it? He could have knocked me over with a feather when he called me Brett Miller. You'd given yourself away if I hadn't cut in on the conversation. Uh, I didn't know what to say. Miller and Mrs. Payne must be partners. I told you, Cal, that Miller took the widow and her son with him when he left St. Joe. Yeah. And now they've struck it rich. Shorty, we're going to get that gold claim. Well, you must be loco. How can we get away with stealing a gold claim? We couldn't register the title or anything. Who said anything about stealing it? It's going to be signed over to us. At that moment, the Lone Ranger and Toto, with their camp gear pack, mounted their horses. Later that night, Slater and Shorty made a stealthy advance across the flat top of Mount Misty. Their attention was focused on two lighted windows of the log cabin. I see Brett Miller. Yeah, so do I. Reckon the others are in the cabin with him. Well, they're due for a big surprise. Inside the snug cabin, Brett Miller and Nancy sat in the living room. They spoke in low voices so as not to disturb Sam or Brett's mother, who were sleeping in tiny bedrooms. And, uh, Nancy, a boy like Sam needs a father. Um, I know I can never take Gerald's place, but, well, I... Oh, oh we got you covered. Cal Slater. Howdy, Brett. Slater. That's the name of the man who... That's right, Nancy. He killed Gerald. Don't, don't move your hands, Brett. We don't want to do any shooting unless you force us to. What do you want? We're here on business, Brett. See if he's got a gun, Shorty. I haven't. So I'll make sure. Keep your hands on the table. Mom, what? Gun? Hold it, kid. Stand still. Oh, Sammy, why did you leave your room? Mom, that man's got Dad's silver six gun. You got good eyes, kid. Now come here and sit down right there next to your ma so we can watch all three of you. Do what he says, Sammy. Mrs. Payne, we're here on business. We heard about the claim you and Miller own. We want to buy it. It isn't for sale. And if it were, we'd certainly not deal with you. Oh, I think you'll sell if the price is right. No, not for any amount of money. We're not talking money. We're talking lives. What? Lives? The life of your mother, Brett, and of your son, Mrs. Payne. Why, you... Hold it, don't sit down. Whoa, slap Brett. Shut up and sit still. We can be just as rough as necessary, Brett. 
Now, to get back to the subject. We leave here tonight with all the papers showing ownership of the claim signed over to us. Or... Or what? Hey, what's that? The masked man! Shoot him! Oh, no. oh. Toto fired through the window as the Lone Ranger's gun spoke from the doorway. Slater struck in the shoulder, staggered back, then fell. Shorty's gun arm was smashed by a bullet, and the fight was over. Oh, my arm! My arm's broken! My shoulder! I'm hurt bad! We'll oh. attend to your wounds after we've tied you. Here, rope, Kimitabi. I'll give you a hand with those crooks. Oh. Mister, that gun, it belonged oh. to my dad. I know it, Sam. I don't know how that... That murderer got it. Do you, Brett? No, oh. Nancy. I sold it to Pop Jenks, as I told you. Oh. How did you get the gun, Slater? I... I brought it from Pop Jenks. That's a lie. Oh. Pop Jenks promised me he'd never sell that gun. Oh. And I know he'd keep his word. Slater, did you steal it from Jenks? I... Did. The truth. All right, I stole it. Faith seems to have returned it to us. Oh. Here, Sam, you take it. Oh, God. We'll return the money Pop Jenks paid for it. Take good care of it, Sam. And remember this. Oh. A fine gun, properly directed, may be a powerful force for law and peace. But improperly directed, it becomes an instrument of evil and destruction. I'll remember. Where did you hear that? Samuel Colt said it when he gave me the guns I wear. What? Oh. What'll we do with these crooks? Hold them here. Tata will help guard them while I ride to the nearest town and get lawmen to take charge of them. I'll be back by daybreak. Tonto, all of us owe our lives to you and your masked friend. After what you tell about Crook, we're glad to catch him. I'd like to know the identity of your friend. You not know? No. I know. What? You do, Nancy? Yes. He's the man for whom Sam Colt made special guns. Guns like the one he made for my dad. The man whose guns are a force for law and peace. He's the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.